people. Let me tell you a little bit about Mr. Foster. This gentleman decided to sleep on his floor until he gets to his next promotion of regional director. He made a commitment. He got after it. Every Friday night, uh, bring it to the table. He has pictures to show people he's prospected again and again and again and again. When I do the private calls on Wednesday, he normally has five to seven people on those calls. And you wonder why he put in uh, 15, 20 people a year just by doing those private calls with me. He's also has two master degrees. So he's, he's real smart. And uh, one day he was sharing a story with it. I'll never forget. He was at his computer and he's working from home. He decided to go to the restroom. He's a grown man. That's right. A grown man with two master degrees decided to go to the bathroom. That's right, to the bathroom, because his keyboard was not working, I'm not moving. He gets a phone call by the time he sits down, and somebody from the company said, are you okay? What are you doing? Where are you at? He goes, for crying out loud, I went to the, I went to the freaking bathroom. That's corporate America for you. And he said, Mr. Thomas, my mind got a click right there for me. I need to get out of this apparatus. I need to get out of this jungle. I need to get out of being owned by this company. Without further ado, with the topic of this month is called Firework Friday. Can we give a nice warm applause to Mr. Sam Foster? Mr. Thomas for that warm introduction as always ladies and gentlemen I thank you for being on the call thank you Mr. Thomas I want to give it right back to you for being a servant leader appealing your community and the community of the world as a whole you are global I also want to give it back to all the leaders on the call all the, all the RDs uh, Mr. Um, Debris Clemens behind the scenes thank you sir I'm gonna go ahead and get started and I'm going to finish. I'm going to try to be as quick as I can, ladies and gentlemen, because as you know, this is Friday and I'm on the road. I'll be in Fort Worth, Texas, peaking, 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 peaking. And if you guys didn't uh, check us out this past week, uh, I'm behind a pillar of leaders. I mean, from Monday, we had Impact Chair Mr. Phil Chrysler come on the call. On Tuesday, Mr. Of course, Chris King, I mean, knocked it out the park. I mean, it was awesome on Wednesday. Of course, we had that young goat, uh, Shaquille Cooper, in the building. He was just fantastic, fantastic. Then on Thursday, Mr. Dean Torelli just scooped us up for the end of the month, ladies and gentlemen. And he just, I mean, he ate our lunch in a good way, in a good way. And then you got, you stuck with little old me. You stuck with little old me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm going to get out your way as quick as I can. Yeah, you can see what I got on. This is not a joke. I just come to deliver the mail, ladies and gentlemen. I come to, to deliver the mail. If you're taking notes and you're not driving, you may want to write this down. The topic for today on Fireworks Friday. Every Friday, it's going to be some sort of fireworks, some sort of fireworks to make you think. Why is that? Because the title of this one is you got mail. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I'm coming to deliver the mail. I dropped it off at my house. I've been dropping this mail off and it's coming to your house. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Let me go ahead and, and slightly get on gallery for a second. Yeah, I see you, Tammy Williams. Pat Robinson, I see you. Rick Kubiak, I see you. Yes, Kathleen Williams, I see you. Gregory Williamson, I see you. Yes, sir. Mr. Adrian, I see you. I see you. I see you, Sherry Young, Al Randolph. I see you, Claudine Collins, Pastor Thomas. I see you. I was just scrolling through gallery, just scrolling through gallery. If you write that down, let me repeat. You got mail. You got mail. Yes, I'm talking to everybody. I don't have enough time to go to the whole gallery. I know it's plenty of people on the call. I got a long way to go in a short time to get there. I promise you I'll be free. If I was preaching a sermon, this would be a sermonette. Trust me, I, I'm ready to get out here and hit these streets. It's July 1st. I'm ready to hit these streets. I'll be in Alabama next week. I'm hitting these streets hard. I heard the assignment coming from Mr. Torelli. 
yes, Mr. Thomas, I heard you. I heard you clear as a whistle. It's time to beat these streets and everybody has mail. So let me go ahead and get started. And it's not ironic that Mr. Um, Evans won't be doing the call on Monday. I even got Mr. Evans covered. Yes, Miss Darlene, I have him covered. He's actually in my midst. Look at how God works in mysterious way. Now, for, for the last maybe three or four days, I was thinking about something that Mr. Evans had said. I was really thinking about something he said. And he said this at least three times on three different messages, three different messages. And it hit me like a ton of bricks about three days ago. I'm sleeping on the floor. You know, my back is hurting me. Ladies and gentlemen, this is real. The revolution will be televised. <laughs> I'm trying to get to this next position like yesterday. So I'm very uncomfortable, I'm frustrated, and I started thinking about Mr. Evans made a statement. And for those of you who've been on the call before, you'll get familiar with this statement when I say it. Some of you new people, trust me, you'll, you'll get it at the end of this message. He made a statement, ladies and gentlemen, and he said something. He said that when he was in his old company, he said that he got prospected by a security guard that was at, was at his facility. And he said that at least three different times on three different messages, at least. And I'm thinking, that got to do with it. And it hit me. This guy was a security guard. No disrespect to my security guards out there. No disrespect to any levels of security. And I'm not belittling the position. It's going to actually help you to understand this whole thing of what we do. Now, if you can understand Mr. Evans, back then when he was in the old company that he was in, if I'm not mistaken, and Mr. Mr. Thomas can help me out, that company only had maybe a couple of services at best. They were really only doing one service. And I'm sitting here going, what, what does that have anything to do with what I'm getting ready to talk about? But it has everything to do with what I'm talking about. Because this guy was a security guard at his uh, company, and Mr. Evans was in the HR department. Now, if most people can follow me, because I want you to kind of go with me now. My mind is scrambled, but I promise you, we're going to fry this head. Now, watch this. In order, if you go into any building, especially now with all these security measures and everything, most buildings, most companies have a security guard. Can you imagine being Mr. Curtis Evans? And this is why I think Mr. Evans says this a lot because it sparks something in his spirit. If you go in the building, most people don't even pay attention to the security guard. It's not like he has a whole lot of weight in the building. And most of the time it's a contracted position. They don't make that much. So you do the math. Now, Mr. Evans said that the guy kept prospecting him about an opportunity. Then Mr. Evans says he finally went with the guy, saw the opportunity, because pretty much like most of us, let's be honest. Somebody at your job, a security guard, you're not really paying attention to the guy, but to get him off your back, like Mr. Evans used to say, I'm going to get you off of my conscience. He went with the guy. He went with he said he saw the opportunity, and he said it was interesting to him. Then he said he got started. Now watch this, ladies and gentlemen, because this is going to help somebody. He said he got started. He said he got started with the security guard now. Security guard. Now you got to remember, I'm going to set this up now. I'm not trying to be long-winded, but I have to set this up. The security guard usually is the makes less on the totem pole than anybody in the building next to the janitor. Think about it. Traditionally, but let me show you how residual income flips itself. Do you realize Mr. Evans said out of his mouth on at least three different occasions that when he joined that guy's organization, he said his leg alone, his leg alone, you got mail coming, pay for this guy mortgage, he, it paid for this guy's car note. It pays for this, pay for this guy's daily utilities as a whole. That one leg 
in this guy's organization. And this guy only had about one or two services. Think about it for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to let that sit for a minute. I'm going to let that marinate. You got mail. I got mail coming. But think about that. Think about that for a minute. That one guy. Now, let me flip it a little bit, ladies and gentlemen, because I want you guys to understand this scenario. Can you imagine if that was you? Now, let's flip it from uh, Mr. Evans, and then we're going to flip it back, back to the security guard. I'm going to play both sides of the coin. If you're Mr. Evans, you're thinking, ah, oh, man, ain't nobody but a security guard. Watch this. Remember, what we do, we don't care if you're from jail or yay. Just got to have a work in. What does that mean? Just come to work. Just come to work. Just that simple. Watch this. Many people probably pass that same guy over. Ah, oh, man, I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. Mr. Evans finally answered the call. Not only was it he able to pay for this guy's daily routine, but watch this. That means that the security guard never had to switch what he was doing originally. So he could have just stayed sitting there as a security guard, and I'm almost willing to bet. I'm not a betting man, but I'm almost willing to bet. If he was able to pay for all that out of one leg, nine times out of 10, he was probably making more than Mr. Evans would. Shh, don't tell nobody. Think about that for a minute. Not only was he probably making more, but he was making it residually, residually more. Now watch this. I even did the math this morning. If that same security guy, because if it would have been me, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be honest with you. I'd have quit my job probably in six months because it was flowing just that deep. But let me explain something to you. Because you know, I just came from outside. Hot out there in Texas, about 105. And delivering this mail, it's a tough job. But somebody got to do it. So watch this. This guy was able to not only replace his income off of that one leg, Curtis said, but if he, he stayed at the job, apparently he did. Let's say he was in the situation we just came out of, and let's say the situation lasted about two and a half years. Well, let's say he stayed on the job as a security guard. Security guard, we pass over people, we ignore people. The guy was probably sitting in the corner as a security guard, nobody paid him any attention, right? He looked like he wasn't doing nothing. But do you realize if he had saved that same amount of money that he was making in that one leg, let's say he saved it for two and a half years based on the situation. Well, wait a minute. He's still at the same job. Well, let's say the boss came in because, you know, a lot of people lost their job during the situation. Let's say the boss came in and told him, say, hey, we're doing away with security guards. We're going to shut the operation down. We're going to like they did me. We're going to at home only. You're going to be Zooming everything. Well, most security guards would have lost their freaking mind. Oh, I ain't got no job. Oh, my God. You know, what am I going to do for money? But let's say that same person caught in the situation, pandemic, he wouldn't have had to say that because he was still at the job. And if I'm not mistaken, he had been partners with Mr. Evans at least a couple of years. Well, he had a couple of years saved up. Wait a minute without even having to really touch it. Residual income, one or two services, and we got a smorgasbord of services here in ACN, essential services. Now, what if that would have been us that could have saved that money in the last two and a half years? It wouldn't have matter what position you was in. You could throw away the pen because the residuals are coming in. We just had a guy come on the call and tell you he an RC and he making five figures. Now imagine if you could do that as a security guard and don't have to spend a dime. And you got two and a half years already in reserve that you don't have to touch. Now that's one leg, ladies and gentlemen. Let's flip it back to ACN. That's one leg. You know the guy probably had multiple legs. Now he's sitting there as a security guard, everybody trying to be important. Gregory, they trying to be important. They walking all past him like he's probably thinking that he's nothing. But he's making probably more than the boss at the company residually. Residually, Kathleen Wing. 
residually flaking, sitting there as a security guard. Now, if that don't flip your mind, I don't know what we. And I got to think to myself, well, that's other people. No, that's the common guy. That wasn't a, a guy that had status. That wasn't the guy that, you know, been in something a long time. No, that's the average person making that residual money. Not an Al Thomas, just the average person. Just a Kathleen Williams, that's an average person. Just an average person. I got the mail. Just a, a Sherry on, just the average person out there in Florida. No bells and whistles to it, but the person stayed consistent. I got beat yesterday too, ladies and gentlemen. I heard what Dean said, but the difference between me and everybody else is I'm doing something about it. I'm back in the streets. I'm back in the streets. The consistency of it all. Can you imagine? Curtis Evans realizing that as he comes in and out the building, that this guy sitting right here that's a security guard does not have to be sitting there at all. Think about it. Residually, he doesn't have to be sitting there, but he's smart. Because I would have been emotional. I told you guys, I would have checked out in six months. Because <laughs> I know it's coming in. And I would have kept beating the streets, but he was smart. He had discipline. You got to have discipline. Because what if the pandemic would have hit? He'd have had two and a half years already in reserve. And if they'd have came up to him and said, we got to let you go, I'm free. He's free. He was free already. Think about it. He was free already. Now watch this. I'm going to bring this home. I had a, a few people that interviewed me this week. And uh, I was blown out of my mind. Because when they interview me, a lot of times if I get a call for an interview, of course, people have already looked at the resume and I got a few accolades on my paper. So if you're calling me, uh, you got to really be kind of be talking about something because gas almost 10 miles a gallon. So I'm not going 10 miles past 10 miles nowhere. You know, that's just me. You know, you got to be really putting something in my pocket for me to move around or go somewhere else. I mean, I mean let's be realistic. Now watch this. Do you guys realize by the time I talked to the person who was doing the interview, let me show you how the game works, and this is going to feed into the next three weeks of my messages as well, so I'm putting a segue into the situation. Watch this. Interviewer calls me and says, uh, Mr. Frost is yeah. So well, we're going to interview for this job and this, that, and the other. They got to talking, and uh, I cut them through the chase, uh, Pat Robinson. I cut them through the chase because now I got residuals on my mind and I'm not trying to trade time for dollars. So they really have to be talking about something. So I said, uh, how much to pay? And during the interview, you really never say that first. You kind of let them talk and you prep yourself and this, that, and the other. But the lady was shocked. She said, huh? I said, uh, how much to pay? I mean, I said it real quick because I'm like, well, I don't have time to play because I'm getting ready to go pee and you holding me up. So it's got, you got to be really talking about something. And then I'm still thinking residuals. So my whole point is, I can't think trading time for dollars anymore. So now you're wasting my time. Because you told the other, I'm just saying, I'm, it's just me. I'm not saying quit your job. I'm not saying, it's just me. I, I'm thinking different. I'm thinking outside the box. I'm thinking Shaquille Cooper. I'm thinking no way these boys grand harder than me. Because I grind. I got to make this up. So watch this here. The lady said, well, I... Well, I don't do that part. Um, uh, HR does that part. And then she, she had the nerve to say, well, that comes in the third or fourth step of the process. And I'm thinking to myself, third or fourth step? Then she said, she, she, she was really trying to get me. So she said this, and this is how they get to corporate America. I'm going to be talking about that next week. Watch this, y'all. She says, well, had about, I'm interviewing about 200 applicants. And I only have two spots left. I'm thinking in my mind, I'm thinking residuals now. You know, my mind is corrupt at this point, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, you can't think just dollars with me because I've, I've been poisoned by you guys. So, I mean, <laughs> I have to be thinking residuals. So she said uh, 200 uh, applicants in two positions. And I said, uh, oh, yeah. She said, oh, yeah. 
She said, we, we thinking about uh, putting you in one of the spots. I said, uh, like I said, how much are you paying? She said, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I let it be an awkward silence, ladies and gentlemen, and I started laughing. Then I said to her, ma'am, gas is almost $10 a gallon. I had to understand, I put her in the residual category. And then I thought about it, ladies and gentlemen, if she not telling me up front and she knows what the base is, even though we have to navigate through it, you need to be telling me something. Then it hit me. And this going to segue into my messages the rest of the uh, month. Wait a minute. Now you so indoctrinated into this residual income thing, it's gonna be hard for for employee to catch you off your off your brand, off your square. Why? Because your mind too solid right about now. You know you're not supposed to be trading time for dollars and getting a tip call to paycheck ever again. Somebody got to be coming to you with six figures banks before you even come off your square. And I started thinking as I started laughing. It got so awkward on the phone, ladies and gentlemen. She said, uh, well, okay, Mr. Foster, uh, 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 we'll holler at you. I said, uh, have a good day. And we hung up the phone. Because there's no way that you can get me off my residual mentality. Because now I know everything else is trading time for dollars and getting a tip called the paycheck. My mind doesn't work that way. You got made. And my mind doesn't work that way. My mind is far past trading time for dollars. My mind is on the SVP level. What do you mean, Sam? Glad you asked. First of all, if you write notes, remind yourself now, you have to be there before you get there. Which What it means is your mentality has to be there before the position ever comes. Or Shaquille Cooper was already there before he became RVP. Uh, Al Thomas was already there before he became an SVP. Uh, uh, Chanel Burke said the best. She said, uh, I was already an SVP. The paperwork chest hadn't showed up yet. I don't know now. Because I heard the same thing y'all heard. Now, if I'm lying, Jabri cut me off. So you have to be there before you get there. And you have to stand firm on backbone and posture and tell some people, I refuse to come off my sweat. I refuse. Because what I'm going for is going to be better than where I'm at. If you keep that in your mind, ladies and gentlemen, you never have to worry about compromising with anybody. I get it. I get it. I know somebody on the call saying, but, 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 but nothing. You don't have to compromise with anybody. With all the stuff we have in ACN, we don't have to compromise with anybody. The only thing we have to do is be consistent. That's it, consistency. That's what wins the race. And I'm sitting here thinking, why are more people not on the wins to call? I'm not on the wins to call, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of times I'm in Bible study, but I still send people on the call. Because that's how convicted I am about the cause. Well, 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 what if they flake on you? What if they don't? Somebody ready to pick the phone up. And in the next two months, you'll be surprised the same people, if you pick them, going to come right back to you. Think about it. Because they need it. They need it. And gas, once again, in Texas, gas is almost $10 a gallon. Somebody don't want to get in the car and drive down the street. And in Texas, ladies and gentlemen, everything is spread out. So when you say you're going down the street, down the street for us in Texas means 30 minutes, one way. That's what we call down the street. See, and we don't have a whole lot of transportation going on because every town is a different municipality. So we got real problems if you talk about getting the car out here in Texas. Think about that for a minute. I don't know about other cities, but I'm just saying. So you may want to think about some residual income coming into your household because once again, that little bit of security guard was making residual income probably sitting in the corner, sitting in the corner 
not even being recognized by anybody but Mr. Evans that knew this boy making residual income repeatedly. And if they come up to him right now and say you're fired, he may, he may get him a check. Think about it. He may get him a check and say thank you. Because he's been sitting on their dime for the last two and a half years. Residual income. Now, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, the next three weeks I would not miss because I'm going to break down the secrets of corporate America like you would not believe. I just touched the surface on how they tried to play me this past week. And when they call me now, if they're not really talking about that, and then if I do get on somebody else's job and switch it up, I'm going to have to be pushing ACN out of the game, which means I be old and cussing. I be old and cussing. So it's going to have to be an opportunity on top of an opportunity because I'm looking at residual. I'm not looking at trade time. Now, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I told you I was going to be brief. I meant what I said. Didn't mean to get all riled up. That's already hot enough. Now, I got some mail in here. Now, surely this belongs to somebody. I don't know who it is, but this belongs to somebody on this call. I got mail. You got mail. Somebody got mail. Now, if this mail is for you with checks in it that you need to cash, I suggest you might want to put this on replay, pass this on to somebody else, and follow me to the streets because we got work to do. Thank you, Mr. Thomas, as always. Thank you, guys. Much love. I'm out.